Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today's episode is about the Google Play Store. It's a follow-up episode to last week's episode where I started talking about apps, the App Store on iOS and all those sorts of things. If you want to check that out, it's available up here. Phones from Samsung, the Google Pixel, Oppo and many other companies use an operating system called Android, made by Google. The Android operating system uses the Google Play Store to install its apps. It's really just the mechanics of the Google Play Store that are a little bit different to the iOS App Store. To use the Google Play Store, you need a Google account. So let's click on the colorful play button and get started. Here we first log in with our Google account, username and password. This is the same Google account that you might use for your Gmail or YouTube, whatever. Then we're prompted to accept the Google Play Store terms and conditions. So we click agree. Now, because this is the first time I've logged into the App Store with this account, I have to check a couple of settings that the Play Store activates on the phone. In this case, backing it up. I click the more button and then click accept to move on. And then we load the main Google Play Store. The Play Store only has four buttons along the bottom, but each of those has four or five sub menus across the top. In this case, I'm in the game section, but I have for you, top charts, premium, categories, family, and editor's choice. Scrolling down the for you section of the games lists a whole bunch of games as recommended for me by Google. There's new and updated games, games to use if you're low on space on your phone, games on sale, games that everybody's using at the moment, which happen to have a seasonal thing. There's some special offers and some games that haven't even been released yet that you can pre-buy. Then there's some indie games and some editor's choice categories. In the top charts section, we have charts for top games, top grossing, trending, and top selling. In the premium section, we have a list of must-have games, games that are on sale, editor's picks, premium indie games, more editor's picks, and a section called the games that we're playing, but I don't know who we are. The categories category lists all of the categories that are available in the store. It's family category has a welcome to parents, and then listings for different things that might be of interest to different age groups, including new and updated, and then some top charts, popular games, no Wi-Fi, no problem, cartoons and TV. The sort of things that you expect that would appeal to little kids. Fun with food, city building games, pretend play, superheroes. Then in the editor's choice section, we have collections for latest stories, and then a bunch of editor's choice selections in Best Innovative Games of 2019, Best Casual Games of 2019, Best Indie Games of 2019, and Best Competitive Games of 2019. All the roundups that you'd expect at this time of year. Moving into the apps section, we have a warning to say stay safe and informed during the heatwaves that are currently affecting Australia. Then we've got a list of movies that you can rent using Google Play Movies. Some top selling ebooks that you can buy with the Google Bookstore, Google Play Books, and then a bunch of editor's choice apps in Best Personal Growth Apps and Best Everyday Essentials of 2019. Then we have Homegrown Apps and app Games, stuff that's just been updated, and things that you can try now and pay later, which basically require in-app purchases. In the top charts section, we have charts for top apps, top grossing apps, trending apps, top selling apps. Sadly, most of them seem to be directed at fires and where the fires are in Australia at the moment. The categories list shows a list of top categories at the top and then a scrolling list down the bottom of all of the different categories that you can buy apps from in the Google Play Store. The Editor's Choice app shows seven different categories with a bunch of different apps in each that the editors have picked as their favourites at the moment. Like the game section, the family section is very similar here, but with a few more categories that aren't necessarily games, though most of them really are. And in fact, most of them are the same games that were in the Games tab under Family. The Early Access tab gives you a chance to see some games that are still in development but have had beta releases pushed to the store to allow for testing. That's a really cute idea, something Apple doesn't do. The main Movies and TV tab lists a bunch of current trending movies and TV shows, as well as some specials and recommendations. And at the bottom, a list of movies that are coming soon that you can add to your wish list. The TV section gives you basically the same thing for TV shows. There are top-selling films and TV shows in different tabs, new movie releases, pre-orders, and new TV show episodes. 
In the genres section, there's a list of all the different genres that movies and TV shows might fall under. So you can look up your favourite sci-fi, fantasy, whatever it happens to be. There's family movies and TV shows, and you can even look at your movies and TV shows sorted by the studio that released them. The last section is basically all of the same over again, except for books. You have ebooks, audiobooks, comics, specific genres, top selling, new releases, children's books, and top free books. In each category, there's a list of editor's choices and various other options. So how do we buy an app? At the top of all of these, there's been the search bar. So I'm gonna use that to search for the Google Sheets app, which I wanna install on this phone. I type in Sheets, search, and there's the app that I want. I click on the app and I can see all of the details about it, as well as some reviews. It's a free app, so I can just click install and it will start the process of downloading the app and installing it on the phone. Once it's finished downloading and installing, I can click open to open the app and I'm ready to do all sorts of spreadsheeting that I want to do. Well, once I get past the intro anyway. If you're interested in Google Sheets in particular, we actually have an episode about that linked up here. Although in that particular case, I'm more covering the web-based version rather than the app version, although they're pretty much the same. I don't really like editing things on the phone, but it's great for looking up quick information that you might have stored in your spreadsheet. Little known fact, we use a Google Sheet as our shopping list. That way we can key it in on our laptops when we know we need to buy something. And then in the store, we just flick through the list and find what we need for everything. I hope that was helpful for you. If you're an Android user, let me know in the comments below what your favorite app is from the Play Store. Thank you so much for watching. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician and navigate your technology maze. You can subscribe to the channel down here, subscribe to our mailing list up here, or there's some other episodes that you may not have seen before, here and here. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.